Hello friends, in this video let us discuss superposition theorem. We are going to talk about the definition of superposition theorem, the problems that is associated with respect to superposition theorem and the drawbacks of superposition theorem is we can't estimate the power directly. All those things we are going to discuss in this video. If you are preparing for competitive exams, this video will be very much helpful. Hello friends, this is Arun Kumar here. I welcome you to my channel Craving Gyan. What is the definition of superposition theorem? It states in any linear bilateral network consisting of dependent, independent, passive and active elements, the total response across an element is given by sum of all the individual responses put together. Nothing but the total response you are finding with the help of nodal analysis or mess analysis or loop analysis or Thevenier's theorem or Norton's theorems. The final answer what you will be getting is same as the individual responses that is taken together. So when you are taking an individual response, say suppose you are having a voltage source V1, V2 and V3. When you are considering voltage source V1, at that time V2 and V3 voltage source should be treated as short circuit. Say suppose you are having one more current source, let me call it as IZ. So at that time this current source need to be treated as open circuit. Nothing but one independent source you have to consider at a time and then you have to solve the network. If I am relating superposition theorem with family, say suppose if I am asking what is the income of your family, you will be telling your father's income plus your mother's income as well as your sibling's income as well as your income, all the individual income corresponds to your family income. So this is how superposition theorem is defined. Once again, I am going to repeat in a linear bilateral network consisting of dependent, independent, active and passive elements. The total response across an element is same as sum of individual responses that is taken together. Able to follow? So in order to understand superposition theorem thoroughly, let us solve a problem. So in this problem, what they are asking is you have to find the voltage drop across this two ohm and they have called it as Vx. So this node voltage is also Vx by assuming this principal node as ground. So in order to determine this Vx, you can make use of nodal analysis or you can make use of mess or loop analysis. Even you can make use of Theminian's theorems and Norton's theorem. Let me make use of nodal analysis. In the case of nodal analysis, what I have to consider is all the current are leaving. This is what the assumption what I made. So let me apply nodal analysis on the leftward current that is Vx minus 6 divided by 2 and the downward current will be Vx divided by 2 and the right side current will be Vx minus 9 divided by 2 which is equals to 0. So you will be getting 3 times of Vx minus 15 which is equals to 0 or you will be getting Vx equals to 5 volts. You will be getting the node voltage Vx equals to 5 volts. So this one I have to prove with the help of superposition theorem. So let me consider case 1. In the first case, let me consider only 6 volt battery and 9 volt battery I am going to treat it as a short circuit. We know that all the remaining voltage source need to be treated as a short circuit and all the other current source need to be treated as an open circuit. So considering 6 volts battery, what I will be getting is the 6 volts battery I am going to retain as it is. Rest of the circuits I need to modify. Nothing but 9 volts I have to treat it as a short circuit. So this entire network remains as it is. 2 ohms, 2 ohms, 2 ohms. This is 6 volts. The node voltage I am going to call it as Vx prime. The node voltage I am going to call it as Vx prime. Let me apply nodal analysis at Vx prime. What you will be getting is Vx prime minus 6 divided by 2 plus the downward current will be Vx prime divided by 2 plus the right side current will be Vx prime divided by 2 plus Vx prime divided by 2 which is equals to 0. So you will be getting 3 times of Vx prime which is equals to 6 or Vx prime which is equals to 2 volts. So you got Vx prime which is equals to 2 volts. Right? Next. In the second case, let me consider only 9 volt battery. Let me consider only 9 volt battery and I am going to treat 6 volt battery as an short circuit. Nothing but I am going to de-energize this 6 volt battery. So the remaining circuit will be the 6 volt battery is treated as a short circuit and you will be having a resistors. 
rest of the circuit remains the same 2 ohm 2 ohm 2 ohm resistors and the battery potential is 9 volt let me call this node voltage as vx double prime vx double prime this is ground so let me apply nodal analysis at vx double prime what you'll be getting is vx double prime divided by 2 that is this current what is the downward current it is again vx prime minus 0 divided by 2 plus what is the leftward current that is vx double prime minus 9 divided by 2 which is equals to 0 or you will be getting 3 times of vx double prime which is equals to 9 volts or you will be getting vx double prime which is equals to 3 volts you will be getting vx double prime which is equals to 3 volt so this vx equals to vx prime plus vx double prime this is what superposition theorem says nothing but you have to consider one source at a time and then you are going to solve the network able to follow so i have discussed with first problem let me consider one more problem also so in order to get familiarized with the things let me consider second problem so in the second problem you will be having a practical voltage source and you will be having a practical current source you will be having a practical current source the practical voltage source valued it is 12 volt comma 2 ohms and the practical current source value is 4 ohm comma 12 volt 4 ohm comma 12 amperes 12 amperes they are asking you to find the node voltage that is vy so in order to calculate this vy what i'm going to do is first let me apply nodal analysis so in the case of nodal analysis all the currents are leaving that is the assumption what i made you can also make an assumption that all the currents are entering or you can assume two currents are entering and one current is leaving or however you want you can assume so the leftward current will be vy minus 12 divided by 2 and the downward current will be vy minus 0 divided by 4 plus this current will be against this 12 ampere so it is minus 12 which is equals to 0 on taking lcm what i'll be getting is 2 times of vy minus 24 plus vy minus 12 which is equals to 0 sorry it is 48 again you have to take lcm right which is equals to 0 so what you'll be getting is 3 times of vy which is equals to 72 which is equals to 72 so you got vy equals to 24 volts so you got vy equals to 25 volts let me verify with the help of superposition theorem in the first case what i need to consider is consider only one active element at a time nothing but considering only 12 volt battery and 12 ampere i'm going to de-energize nothing but i'm going to treat it as an open circuit the remaining circuit what you'll be having is you'll be having a 12 volt battery in series with 2 ohms and you'll be having a 4 ohm resistor this current source i have treated it as an open circuit so let me call this potential as a vy prime so vy prime is given by 12 into let me make use of voltage divider rule 12 into 4 divided by total resistance is 2 plus 4 which is 6 so you'll be getting vy prime which is equals to 8 volts vy prime you'll be getting 8 volts next next case what i'm going to consider is considering only 12 ampere battery consider only 12 amperes and 12 volts you need to treat it as an short circuit nothing but you have to de-energize so the remaining circuit will be 2 ohms and here it is 4 ohms and you will be having a battery of the current source the current source value is 12 ampere the current source value is 12 ampere let me calculate this vy double prime vy double prime so in order to calculate this vy double prime let me make use of nodal analysis what is this current the current is vy double prime divided by 2 and the downward current will be vy double prime divided by 4 and this current will be 12 which is equals to 0 so on taking lcm i'll be getting two times of vy double prime plus vy double prime minus 48 which is equals to 0 48 which is equals to 0 so what you'll be getting is 
3 times of Vy double prime which is equals to 48. So we'll be getting Vy double prime which is equals to 16 volts. Which is equals to 16 volts. So I got Vy equals to Vy dash plus Vy double dash. Let us consider the third example in superposition theorem. So in this network what they are asking is you have to calculate the current that is I. So in order to calculate this current I let me make use of nodal analysis. So you are having the principal node this principal node I am going to assume to be ground and you will be having one more principal node and you will be having this one also on principal node and this one also on principal node. So you are having three principal node with respect to ground this is at 10 volts with respect to ground this node is at 20 volts so this is one node let me call it as vx so you have to apply nodal analysis at vx so applying nodal analysis at vx you will be getting assume all the currents are leaving the node so what you will be getting is the leftward current will be vx minus 10 divided by 1 plus the downward current will be vx divided by 2 plus the right side current that is flowing will be Vx minus 20 divided by 2 which is equals to 0. So on taking LCM I will be getting 2 times of Vx minus 20 plus Vx plus Vx minus 20 which is equals to 0. So I will be getting 4 times of Vx which is equals to 40 or you will be getting Vx e equals to 10 volts. So you got Vx equals to 10 volts. So I need to calculate what is the current that is I. So the expression for I is given by 10 minus 10 divided by what is the resistance that is involved in the path that is 1 ohm. So 10 minus 10 divided by 1 which is equals to 0 ampere. So the current that is flowing through 1 ohm resistance is 0 or no any current will be flowing in that branch. Able to follow? So in order to prove with the help of superposition theorem, you have to consider one source at a time. So first case what I am going to consider is, I am going to consider 10 volt battery, 6 ampere current source need to be treated as open circuit, also 20 volt battery need to be treated as short circuit. As I discussed, all the other remaining voltage source need to be treated as an short circuit and all the other current sources need to be treated as an open circuit. So the remaining circuit what you will be getting is you will be having a battery whose potential is 10 volt and the resistance is 1 ohm and this resistance is 2 ohm and you will be having one more resistor that is 2 ohm and this is to be treated as short circuit and you will be having one resistor and you have to open circuit the current source. So basically what you have to find is you have to calculate this current that is I. Now look at over here this 2 ohm and 2 ohms are in parallel. So when the 2 ohm and 2 ohm resistors are in parallel what is 2 parallel with 2 which is 1 ohm. This 1 ohm is in series with this 1 ohm. So the equivalent value of the resistor will be 2 ohms. So the value of the current I is 10 ohm divided by are equivalent so you will be getting 10 divided by 2 which is equals to 5 ampere let me call this current as i1 because it is case 1 so i have considered the current as i1 right in case 2 what i need to consider is i need to consider only so i need to consider only 20 old battery i need to consider only 20 old battery so this 10 volts battery need to be treated as short circuit, 10 volt battery need to be treated as short circuit and 6 ampere current source need to be treated as open circuit, right. The remaining circuit what you will be getting is you will be having 1 ohm resistor and 2 ohm resistor, this resistance is 2 ohm, this 10 volt battery is to be treated as short circuit and you will be having an actual battery that is 20 volt. And you will be having the current source in series with the resistor which is to be treated as an open circuit. Let me call this current as I2. So in order to calculate this current I2, let me make use of source transformation. You will be having 20 volt in series with 2 ohm. So how can I reduce? I will be having a 1 ohm resistor and this 2 ohm over here and 
2 ohm which are in parallel and you will be having a current source what is the rated current this current value is 10 ampere this current value is 10 ampere you need to calculate this current that is i2 right so what is 2 ohm in parallel with 2 ohm that is 1 ohm so the remaining circuit what you will be getting is you will be having a resistor of 1 ohm and a resistor of 1 ohm and you have to calculate this current that is i you have to calculate this current that is i2 the source is 10 ampere so if i am calling this current as iz if i am calling this current as iz what is iz expression iz equals to what is the total current that is 10 ampere multiplied by opposite branch resistance is 1 divided by total branch resistance is 1 plus 1 that is 2 which is equals to 5 ampere which is which is minus of i2 so i got i2 equals to minus 5 amperes i got i2 equals to minus 5 amperes because i2 direction is opposite to that of iz so here i made use of current divider rule here i just made use of current divider rule next let us consider the third case in third case what i need to consider is i need to consider only 6 ampere source i need to consider only 6 ampere source this 10 volt battery need to be treated as a short circuit and 20 volt battery need to be treated as a short circuit i'll be having a resistor whose value is i'll be having a resistor whose value is 3 ohm 3 ohm in series with a current source of 6 ampere rest of the circuit you have to write as it is you'll be having a 1 ohm resistor and 2 ohm resistor also you will be having a 10 volt battery which is need to be treated as a short circuit and a resistor of 2 ohm and a resistor of 2 ohm and this 20 volts also you need to be treated as a short circuit so this 6 ampere current is flowing through this 3 ohm and you need to calculate what is this current that is i3 now look at over here this 6 ampere source will be flowing through this path and it will be having two paths over here one path is through one ohm and the other path is through a short circuit always we know the current takes the least resistive path that is this path so it is going to trace this path it is going to trace this path so if it is tracing this path what is the current that is i3 so this current i3 equals to 0 amperes so i got i3 equals to 0 amperes right so if i am considering all the circuits i got i equals to 0 amperes and if i am considering individual circuits i got i1 equals to 5 amperes i2 equals to minus 5 amperes and i got i3 equals to 0 amperes according to superposition theorem i equals to i1 plus i2 plus i3 which is equals to 5 minus 5 plus 0 I got I equals to 0 amperes this is how superposition theorem is defined you consider all the source at a time and solve or additive of each and every individual responses you take and solve you will be getting the same result able to follow this is how superposition theorem is defined if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends don't forget to subscribe to my channel craving Gyan. To keep updated with things, please join our telegram group. Thank you. All the best for your exams.